good day everyone, especially to our professor, Dr. Landon Kennis. This is Development, Management, and Evaluation. And my name is Ari Joy B. Dilima. And my report is all about choosing evaluators, developing an evaluation plan, and participatory evaluation. Let's discuss first, what is choosing evaluators? So what is evaluation? Examine what and how you are doing from various people. Why to carefully select an evaluator? To have an accurate information, public opinion, and to make adjustments if necessary. An evaluation is not simply a matter of looking at your organization or initiative and saying it's doing okay. It should examine what you are doing from number of different angles and perspectives and should give you not only a clear sense of whether or not you're accomplishing your goals but of where your strengths and weaknesses lie, of how to improve what you're doing, and of not out of new directions to explore. No matter how well your evaluation is planned, and it should will be planned, you'll still need evaluators that have the skills and knowledge to look at your particular situation accurately. The real reason for an evaluation is its usefulness in improving the organization. The more and the more accurate the information you get and the better it's analyzed, the more useful it will be in helping you identify and build your organization's strengths and pinpoint and correct the areas it needs to work on. You may be able to hire evaluators or you may be choosing volunteers from your staff or the community you serve. Or you may simply be choosing a planning team that will go on to select evaluators. In any of these cases, the particular individuals you select will influence the shape of the evaluation you get and what kind of results you get from it. When should you choose evaluators? The short answer is, or the short answer to this question is, as soon as possible. Evaluation should not start at the end of the project. This should be ongoing, so the information can continually be used to improve what you're doing. A planning team should probably be chosen when the organization or initiative begins, or even before, so that an evaluation can look not only at what organization has done, but at how it changed over the evaluation period. Before evaluation, let's decide on the following. First, money. This may be the most important, especially for the newer and smaller organization, Generally, the more grassroots your base is, the less money you have. If you have a funder who requires or is willing to pay for evaluation as part of a grant, then hiring professionals is at least an option. If there is no money available and no possibility of getting any, community or other volunteers may be your answer. Next is complexity of an evaluation. For some organizations or initiatives, an evaluation may be re relatively straightforward. They simply want to measure whether their very specific goals are be being met. By the fact that sometimes a deep knowledge of the community may do more complex or more to answer complex questions, that a knowledge of research methods. If you have the option of using professionals, you'll have to decide whether or not that actually the best idea here. Next one is the type of information desired. If you're collecting quantitative data, for example, numbers, it's often not possible to simply look at them and draw conclusions. 
there are statistical procedures that can be applied to the numbers to tell you what they really mean, how significant they are, and what they imply about other ways you could operate. If you need this kind of information, or if funders or others are specifically asking for it, it would probably be helping either to hire professionals, researchers, or to find some volunteer uh, professional guidance. Sometimes, conducting such statistical procedures can tell you important things you never expected to find out. So, what to look for when choosing evaluators? First is non-bias. It's important to, to be clear on all sides at the beginning. Next one is able to communicate with various people. So, uh, evaluator, evaluators will have to deal with people from all walks of life. Next is culturally or culturally sensitive. Evaluators need to respect the cultures of the communities they work with and not violate them intentionally or unintentionally. Next one is able to treat everyone equally. So uh, the respect or respect is most important. So respect everyone and treat them and treat them equally. Next is able to keep all information confidential because it's pro it protects the evaluators and the organization from the information they give. Another is committed to the evaluation. Believing enough is in the process to take the evaluation seriously and use it to make adjustments to and improve the program, service, or activity. My next topic is all about developing an evaluation plan. Why should you have an evaluation plan? It is the best way to ensure that you have the most productive evaluation possible. So, there are reasons why you should develop an evaluation plan. First is, it guides you throughout each step of the process of evaluation. Next, it helps you decide what sort of information you and your stakeholders really need. And it keeps you from wasting time gathering information that isn't needed. Another reason why you should develop an evaluation plan is it helps you identify the best possible methods and strategies to, uh, for getting the needed information. And it helps you come up with a reasonable and realistic timeline for evaluation. Most importantly, it will help you improve your initiative. When you should develop an evaluation plan, as soon as possible, the best time to do this is before you implement the initiative. After that, you can do it anytime. But the earlier you develop it and begin to implement it, the better off your initiative will be, and the greater the outcomes will be at the end. Remember, evaluation is more than just finding out if you did your job. It is important to use evaluation data to improve the initiative along the way. What are the different types of stakeholders and what are their interests in your evaluation? For community health, health groups, there are basically three groups of people who might be identified as the stakeholders. Those who are interested, involved, and invested in the project or initiative in some way. They are the community groups, the grant makers or funders, and the university-based researchers. So what are the, their interests? So for community groups, it, this is the most obvious category of the stakeholders 
because it includes the staff and our volunteers involved in your initiative or project. It also includes the people directly affected it or affected by it, your targets, and the agents of change. Community groups may want to use evaluation results to guide them in decisions about their programs and where they are putting their, their efforts. Grant makers and funders. Most grant makers and funders want to know how their money is being spent. So you'll find that they often have specific requirements about things they want you to evaluate. And for grant makers also and funders are, for example, will usually want to know how many people were reached and served by the initiative as well as whether the initiative had a community level impact it intended to have. And the third is university-based researchers. This includes the researchers and evaluators that your coalition or initiative may choose to bring as consultants or full partners. Such researchers might be specialists, um, the, uh, in, uh, specialists in public health promotions, epidemiologists, behavior, behavioral scientists, specialists in evaluation, or some other academic field. And researchers will most likely to be interested in proving whether any improvements in community health were definitely caused by your programs or initiatives. They may also want to study the overall structure of your groups or initiative to identify the conditions under which success may be reached. Each type of stakeholder will have a different perspective on your organization as well as what they want to learn from the evaluation. Every group is unique and you may find that there are other sorts of stakeholders to consider with your own organization. Take some time uh, to brainstorm about who your stakeholders are before being your uh, evaluation plan. Uh, they are the decisions do stakeholders to make and how would they use the data to form those decisions. For community groups will probably want to use the evaluation results to help them find ways to modify and improve your, your program or initiative. For the grant makers and funders, we're mostly or most likely be making decisions about how much funding to give you in the future or even whether to continue funding your program at all or any related programs. And four university-based researchers will need to decide how they can best assist with plan development and data reporting. So, balancing cost and benefits, we should ask the following questions. What do you need to know? What is required by the community? What is required by the funding? Evolution should take up about 10% of your total budget. Okay. How do you develop an evaluation plan? So there are steps on how to develop an evaluation plan. First is the clarifying program objectives and evaluation. What are the main things you want to accomplish and how have you set out to accomplish them? Clarifying this will help you identify which major program components should be evaluated. One way to do this is to make the table of program components and elements. Another is develop a sample evaluation question. 
These are the sample evaluation questions. Who participates or who are the participants? How many hours? Then how do participants enter and leave your program? Are they satisfied? What service are given? Does it meet local needs? How has behavior changed? And is it beneficial? So, the third one is develop evaluation method. So, in evaluation method, we need to have the monitoring and the feedback system. So, we have to monitor and give feedback after. So, process outcome and uh, process and outcome measures and observation. Next is member satisfaction survey. So, we need to have also the survey. If our, if the members had really satisfied the initiative or the uh, program. Goal attainment scaling and behavioral survey, interviews, and community level indicators. Fourth is the setting up a timeline for the evaluation activity. So when does evaluation need to begin? Right now or at least at the beginning of the initiative. Next, when do feedback and report need to be provided? Whenever you feel it's appropriate, at the end of the evaluation, throughout or throughout the duration of the project or initiative. We can give feedback. Another is when should when should evaluation end? So shortly after the end of the project. Usually when the final report is due, don't wait too long after the project has been completed to finish up your evaluation it's best to do things while everything is st still fresh in your mind and you can still get access to any in information you might need what product should you get from the evaluation so our report must include expect changes so find out what key people want to know be sure to address any information that you know they're going to want hear about. Behavior change, find out how your coalition efforts have changed the behavior of your targets and agents of change. Have any of your strategies caused people to cut down on risky behaviors or increase behaviors that protect them from risk? Are key people in the community cooperating with your efforts? Next is community changes. Find out what change is the public aware of your coalition or group's efforts. Do they support you? What steps are they taking to help you achieve your goals? Have your efforts caused any changes in local laws or practices? Next is the specific tool. Example is the brief reports, summarizing data to the annual report, the quarterly report, or the monthly report from the monitoring system. And anything else that is mutually agreed upon between the organization and the evaluation team. What sort of standard should you follow in developing an evaluation plan? First, fairness, accuracy, and effectiveness. And also the 1994 uh, Joint Committee uh, on Standards for, edu uh, for Educational Evaluation Standards. And the standards the committee outlined. So, that's 
call for develop uh, for developing an evaluation plan. My third topic is all about participatory evaluation. What is participatory evaluation? Participatory evaluation involves all the stakeholders in a project. Those directly affected by it are carrying it out in contributing to the understanding of it and in applying that understanding to the improvement of the work. So the real purpose of an evaluation is not just to find out what happened, but to use the information to make the project better. In order to accomplish this, evaluation should include or examining at least two areas, the process, implementation, and outcome. The process of a project includes the planning and logistical activities needed to set up and run it. Project, project implementation is the actual work of running it, and the project outcomes are its result what actually happened as a consequence of the project's existence. And in participatory evaluation, stakeholders should be involved in. First is naming and framing the problem of goal to be addressed. Next is developing a theory of practice or the process that uh, logic model for how to achieve success and identifying the questions to ask about the project and the best ways to ask them these questions will identify what the project means to do and therefore what should be evaluated uh, why would you use participatory evaluation so there are advantages of participatory evaluation. It gives you better perspective on both the initial needs of the project's beneficiaries and on its ultimate effects. It can get you information you wouldn't get otherwise. Another advantage is it tells you what worked and what didn't from the perspective of, the, of those most directly involved or the beneficiaries and staff. It can tell you why something does or doesn't work. It results in more effective project. It empowers stakeholders. Another is it can provide a voice for those who are often heard. It teaches skills that can be used in employment and other areas of life. And bolsters self-confidence and self-esteem in those who may have little or either. It demonstrates to people ways in which they can take more control of their lives. Another is it encourages stakeholder ownership of the project. It can spark creativity in everyone involved and encourages working collaboratively. And it fits into a larger participatory efforts. So if there is advantages in participatory evaluation, there are also disadvantages. What, and, uh, uh, first is it takes more time than conventional process. It takes the establishment of trust among all participants in the process. And you have to make sure that everyone's involved, not just leaders of various people. You have to train people to understand evaluation and how the, uh, the participatory process works, as well as teaching them basic research skills. Another significant disadvantage of participatory evaluation is you have to get buy-in and com commit from the participants. People's lives, illness, child care, relationship problems, getting the crops and etc. may cause delays or get in the way of the, of the, the evaluation. 
you may have to be creative creative about how you get record and report information and funders and policy makers may not understand or believe in the participatory evaluation when might you use participatory evaluation so when you are really or already, already committed to a participatory process for your project when you have the time or when results are more important than time when you can convince for funders that it's a good idea when there when there be issues in the community or population that outside evaluators or program providers for the for that matter aren't likely to be aware of when you want to bring the community or population together when you need information that it will be difficult for any outside the community or population to get when part of the goal of the project is to empower participants and help them develop transferable skills who should involve in participatory evaluation so all the stakeholders include participants or beneficiaries they are the people whom the project is being meant to benefit next is the project line staff and or volunteers so they are the people who actually do the work of carrying out the project next is the administrators they are the people who coordinate the project or specific aspects of it and the out, outside evaluators if they're involved in many cases outside evaluators are hired to run participatory evaluations the need for their involvement is obvious then the community officials you may need, need the support of the community leaders another is other whose lives are affected by the project how do you conduct a participatory evaluation so we must recruit stakeholders as participant evaluators train evaluators name and frame the issue develop a theory of practice to address it determine the evaluation questions so yung mga evaluation questions natin na uh, sinabi ko a while ago collect information analyze the information use analysis to to uh, celebrate what work and adjust the rest of uh, the rest to improve the project stick with it indefinitely that's the end of my report so once again this is program development management and evaluation and my name is rj joy v dilima thank you for listening and god bless us all